ESPN College Football Primetime. And welcome to Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, for a Sunbelt matchup between the Troy Trojans and the Georgia Southern Eagles. Look at the Sunbelt standings. Yes, Georgia Southern in their first year in the conference. The win tonight will go to 6-0 in conference play. Troy looking for conference win number two on the season. So happy you could spend part of your Thursday night with us along with former NFL quarterback Jay Walker. I'm Mark Daly. Jay, this Georgia Southern offense led by their rushing attack. They lead the nation 402 yards per game. They challenge opponents to try to stop their run. They have all the tools you need to have a successful running attack. A solid offensive line that plays fundamentally sound, and they have plenty of speed in their offensive backfield. Anytime you've got speed in the quarterback position, that's an immediate threat. You must have that in order to execute the option. Kevin Nelson does a fantastic job running the football with his decision making, and he can also throw the football a little bit. Then they have a change of back, uh, tempo back in Ramsey. He'll offset the All-American candidate they've got in Matt Breida. Matt Breida is sensational. Over a 1,000 yards rushing on the season. Speed at the perimeter. He's got one speed. It's fast, fast, and super fast. Matt Breida's a special one. He's the guy that really makes this Eagles offense go. Well, Georgia Southern certainly looking like one of the marquee programs in the Sun Belt. For years, though, that moniker was worn by Troy. The Trojans won five consecutive conference titles, 2006 to 2010. This certainly seemed to be a year of transition. Their head coach, Larry Blakeney, has already announced that he will retire at the end of the season. And it's unfortunate for Coach Blakeney that he's going out with this type of ball club. They have to replace over 400 yards of total offense at the quarterback position alone. Throw in the wide receiver from last year, Eric Moore, no longer the program. They've taken their lumps, but defensively has been the challenge. They're giving up 244 yards rushing per game. If they have that type of performance tonight, it's going to be a long, long game for Coach Blakeney and the Trojans. Nice crowd here tonight at Paulson Stadium. This facility which opened up in 1984. Their head coach in his first season, Willie Fritz, his 22nd year as a head coach. He's come here from San Houston State, taking this program to its first full year at the FBS level. Young Way Koo, the sophomore out of Ridgewood, New Jersey, to kick it off. Troy receiving with Worthy and Rubin back, and Worthy takes it from the goal line. He, is with, he lost the football, but it looked like it was recovered by Troy. No! They say Georgia Southern has it. And Worthy, a player who's returned two kickoffs for touchdowns this year, coughs it up. And the Eagles recover to begin the football game. Oh, what a tough break. They're coming on the road. It's a conference opponent that's playing football at a very high level. You must shore up your special team if you want to have a chance of coming here and pulling off the upset. But you'll see Chandler Worthy. Oh, well, his knee knocked it out. Ball wasn't even hit. Self-inflicted wound there. Big opportunity early for the Eagles to get on the scoreboard. Raekwon Sam recovered it for Georgia Southern. So they begin after the turnover. Inside the 20-yard line and a handoff to Brita off right tackle. He's inside the 15 to a down near the 12, tackled by Fred or Dibo. That's Brita, the 5'10, 185-pound sophomore. When I look at him, outstanding running back, Kevin Ellison, a quarterback who will also run the football. Ellison is the decision maker. I mean, he's bigger than Brita. You know, Ellison's six feet, almost 200 pounds, and Brita's 5'10, 190, just a young pup, but they're very formal with their speed. It'll be interesting to see those two in the footballs. Ellison keeping this time. Cuts it around the corner. And is pushed out at the two-yard line by Jaquadrian Lewis to prevent the touchdown. The decision-making from the quarterback position has become the key in college football. What a great decision by Ellison to decide to run the football. What a nice block from Jeff Ward, the H-back. Ellison, who has eight rushing touchdowns already this year. It's a first and goal. Georgia Southern at the two-yard line of Troy. And movement, it looked like, on the right side. False start. Offense, number 96. Five-yard penalty. First down. And Jeff Ward had the nice block on the previous play to help almost put Ellison into the end zone, but there called for the false start. So first and goal from the two turns into first and goal from the seven. <laughs> the 
Reedy goes in motion. Ellison going to run again, cuts it back into the end zone. Touchdown. Seven yard run. Ellison's ninth rushing touchdown of the season. Great job of decision making. Of Ellison, this was a call quarterback draw for Darian Foreman. The left guard did a good job pulling it to the hole. You see him number 63 come around, get in the way. Anytime you've got linebackers running away from blocks, you've done your job as an interior lineman. You can see the contact was avoided by Jaquan Green Lewis, allowing Ellison to make it to the end zone easily. Alex Hanks with a point after out of the hole to Ryan Nowicki. And they convert the turnover into points. Quickly, 7 0 Georgia Southern. Now you drawing up, taking advantage of special teams. The good teams will make you pay every time. Kevin Ellison, the Eagles. Out of the year, 7 0 Georgia Southern as they take advantage of the Chandler Worthy fumble for the opening kickoff. Chandler Worthy has two kickoff return touchdowns this year. Three weeks ago against Appalachian State, went for 99 yards, and a week later, it's New Mexico State with 89. Did not run one back last week against South Alabama, but had back-to-back -back weeks against App State and New Mexico State with kickoff returns for touchdown. Popped it up first time tonight. Young Way Coop kicks it off once again. Time it's Ruben from the yard deep. And he makes it out to the 20. So we will see the Troy offense for the first time tonight. And number 12 there is Brandon Silver, 6'2, 208 pound redshirt freshman. Big, big shoes to fill, no doubt, Jay. When you lose a quarterback the caliber of Corey Robinson, and, and don't forget Deion Anthony also played some quarterback last few years as well for them. But I really like Brandon Silver. He's not the reason this offense going to put up 18 points a game. The offensive line play has been spotted. If you look at Silver, very quick release, very good intermediate passer. Needs to work on his ability to throw the ball down the field, however. As time to throw, finds the back, Chen out of the backfield for a gain of five. Brought down by Edwin Jackson. Let's take a look at our impact player. Speaking of the guy they call Mega Chun. He's a low to bring down. I want to see them use him more. Defenders win when they have to try and tackle him. But Edwin Jackson has to step it up. He's the leading tackler for this team, and he's the guy they're going to funnel everything into the middle. Him and Chun, that's the matchup I want to see. Right of the snap. Ball start, offense, number 69, five-yard counting, go second down. Left guard Dalton Bennett called for the false starts. Bennett, a junior out of Mariana, Florida. Jordan Chun was getting a carry. The whistle blew the play dead. Chun had 14 rushing touchdowns last year. That was the most for any freshman in the nation. Has four rushing touchdowns on this season coming into tonight. And the pass to Rubin, Teddy Rubin, to the 28. He picks up about seven. Antoine, Antoine Williams, Williams with the tackle for the Eagles. Down by third down in three, and third down has been the real big bugaboo for Troy this year in the offense game. For the most part, it's been that third and medium where they really struggled. You assume they're going to pick it up, but for the Trojans, that has not been the case. Handoff, Chun comes down right near the 30. It will be close with the spot. He may actually be a nose of the football short. Antoine Williams with another tackle for the Eagles. Another 37. Junior out of Lovejoy, Georgia, and indeed Chun is a hair short. And that's typical of the Trojan offense this year. They have the ability to do some things right, but that last run, you can tell Chun not able to quite square his shoulders to the line of scrimmage, got knocked sideways, came up half a yard short on the first down. Ryan K to punt, averaging 40 yards per punt this year. This one away with Trey Butler. Actually, you take a bounce inside the 40. It'll be down to around the 38 yard line, so Georgia Southern. We'll have their second possession after a 36-yard punt. Troy leads the lifetime series against Georgia Southern. Ten wins the three. This head-to-head -head matchup actually goes all the way back to the 30s, but have not met since the 1995 FCS quarterfinals when Georgia Southern beat Troy. In fact, we were 
talking with head coach Larry Blakeney on the field just prior to the game tonight about that game. He remembers that. <laughs> you know, Very well. You always remember postseason play. These two programs, they have so many roles in which they were intertwined. When one was the big brother when you had Georgia Southern, that was FCS or 1AA, and Troy was Division II trying to move up, and then Troy made the leapfrog to get to FBS or Division I sooner, and they started taking over the relationship. Allison's going to run with it. Tripped up at the 44-yard line by Montrese Kitchens. Gain of six. Let's take a look at our impact players. Lonnie goes to the defensive tackle. He has to step up big for two reasons. One, uh, star defensive end Tyler Roberts is out of the lineup, as well as starting inside linebacker Mark Wilson. So if you're going to try and stop Georgia Southern from running the ball, you're going to have to clog up the middle and force him to the outside. In motion goes Monte Crockett. Ellison play fake, and he's going to throw it. Good coverage and incomplete at the 25-yard line. B.J. Johnson, the intended receiver, a nice coverage there by Ethan Davis, the quarterback. Johnson's helmet came off. He's going to have to come out for a play. Georgia Southern, 5-0 in conference play, 6-2 overall. Their only losses, the NC State and Georgia Tech. And both of those were tight games, though they lost both. Both those games, they had a lead in the fourth quarter. Capitalized with a very impressive season. The Eagles are having this far. I'll let you know they're almost something special here in State Girls. Third down at four. Here's the pitch. Crockett has the first down across midfield to the Troy 45-yard line. Run down by Montreese Kitchens. And they convert on third down at four with a run of 10 for Crockett. Great job here. This is an assignment football. Get man on the line of scrimmage. You're going to option. They can make a commitment the moment that Femi over value is committed to the quarterback. They can get the pitch out and get the running back in full stride. By the way, Georgia Southern tonight, it was a game-time decision for wide receiver Zach Walker, so we have not seen him. He may not play tonight. And one of the wideouts for the Eagles. You may not see the field in this one, one of their starters. Here's Ellison. He has Breeden. Fakes the pitch beautifully, takes it himself to the 36-yard line. Sam Levy, the middle linebacker with the tackle. Watch the athleticism on this play. We talked about the previous play. In man in the line of scrimmage. That's where you're going to run the option off of. Same matchup. Femi Odebayo against Kevin Ellison. This time, what does he do? I know you're responsible for me. Let me give you a little shake move before I give the pitch. <laughs> athleticism and speed at the quarterback position. A deadly combination for an option offense. Came up just short of the first down. They did a little mini huddle. They break in a second down and one. No snap, but... Here's Ellison to throw and hit right as the pass got to him. It's Kentrelli showers by Trey Hall, number three, the quarterback. On the coverage for the Trojans. The third down and one. We mentioned the injury on the side of Georgia Southern, but the Troy defense playing without Tyler Roberts, arguably their best player on their defense, defensive end out of a high ankle sprain. And Mark Wilson, starting middle linebacker out. Possible concussive symptoms. If you're playing a passing team, you can maybe cover that up. When you're playing a team that rushes for over 400 yards per game, it's going to be a tough day at the offense. The backups have to step up. First carry for L.A. Ramsby, and he's going to have enough for the first down inside the 35. Tackled by Daniel Ward. He's one of the little linebacker spots in the action. Mark Wilson. 402 yards per game. That leads the nation. Navy, Wisconsin, Tech, Army, all the top five. You know you run the football very well when you have more rushing yards than Navy. Yeah, and Army. Because Navy and Army, they won't attempt to pass a whole game. So this is an offense that has big play potential, yet they throw the ball for over 100 yards per game as well. Ellison keeping, fake the pitch, off running again, and brought down from behind at the 25 by Montrese Kitchens, the safety. We talk, we talk about Mark Wilson not being in the game, but one of the backups is Daniel Warren, number 45. And look at Daniel Warren chasing the quarterback, not where you went to middle linebacker. He lost his containment. I think that was just a case of Ellison. It's more of the athleticism on display. See the numbers for Ellison. Last week against Georgia State, which was a game played in Atlanta in the Georgia Dome, he had 15 carries, 115 yards, a rushing TD. Also went five for six through the air, 47 yards. Rita 
Knocked down by Kitchens to pick up a five. One of the storylines going into the college football season here in Georgia Southern was new head coach Willie Fritz. You know, what's he going to do? This is a school that's so deep in their tradition, they really don't like a lot of change because they've had so much success. Well, he brought to them the triple option, but it wasn't the triple option they're used to seeing here with the quarterback under center. Very successful running this offense at Sam Houston State and the winning ways and the offensive production have continued taking it to the Sun Belt Conference. Another run for Rita straight ahead on first down. A couple of yards, Daniel Warren with the tackle. Rita this year has seven rushes of 50 or more yards. He had a 75-yard run last week against Georgia State. A game that Georgia Southern won 69-31. It was the 300th win in the school's football history and their modern history as they call it they didn't play football between 42 and 81 after beginning football originally in the 20s Crockett in motion Ellison feeding the back Rita Rita avoided one tackle but not the second and third there to 20 Daniel Warren the initial one to reach Rita and bring him down he loses two Probably throwing the ball so early in this contest. I know that Troy is going to do some extra things to stop the running game. And last week, Kevin Ellison only attempted six passes. We've already seen him throw the ball three times as well. One thing that Georgia Southern does very well, they can run the ball versus outnumbered boxes. When they have eight or nine defenders in the box, they're still effective at picking up positive yards. And it's Scott is now coming for running back spot for Georgia Southern. This is the 11th play of this drive. Ellison will pitch it. B.J. Johnson. Close to a first down there at the 11. Knocked down by Dondrell Harris. And B.J. Johnson, yes, number 12, he's a wide receiver. But he can do some things like a running back. They get everybody involved in this triple option. This is pure triple option. Dive man, quarterback, pitch man to Johnson. What a luxury to be able to have 30 to pick up nine and a half yards running the football. Great hands, Johnson, who leads their team and catches with 18 coming in. It is fourth and one. They go for it. Rams be the back. And the 11-yard line of Troy. Give it to Ramsby straight ahead, first down. And it'll be first and goal, Eagles. And the tackle for Daniel Warren. One of the guys we talked about is our impact player, number 75, right? The center of your screen, you'll see him here. Take a good job he does getting off the ball. It's Man Ray saying the more. Follow your center. He's going to get on somebody, find the crease. The offensive line working in unison. The LA Rams be able to pick up the first down. Say the more, whose family is of Haitian descent, lives in Sawana, Georgia. With members in the red zone for the Eagles. Ramsby. Stopped by Billy Dobbs, the defensive tackle. One of the seniors on that defensive front. And up here with Ball Statham. Richard sure Freshman also helping out on the hit. He's third on their team at tackles. That was number 41 on the year. Ramsby comes out. Rita back in. Now the single pitch to Brita. Knocked out by Darren Reddick, the safety. Rita comes in, protective perimeter. He likes to run to the outside. Nice pitch. It comes a foot race, and he just misses getting to the end zone for a score. And that's textbook. I mean, the defender's going to square up the quarterback like that. That's an easy game for the quarterback to make all day. That's when the running back starts cheating and running downhill to gain momentum going towards the line of scrimmage. Here's the 15th play of the drive of the previous 14, 11 rushes, three passes. I like to do a pop pass down here. I'd be careful watch the tight end line of scrimmage. Sent Brita in motion. Yep, Ellison wanted to do so, and instead <laughs> runs it into the end zone. Well, you called the play, Jay, but Ellison improvises and runs in for the second time tonight. This was good defense by the Trojans. They actually... Had great coverage. 
on Jeff Ward, number 90, uh, on the end, the tight end trying to get out. But this gets a better play by Kevin Allison. Realized the play wasn't there, didn't force it. Prepared to throw it away, but realized the quarterback was unaccounted for in the running game. He goes in untouched. Yeah, they had Jeff Ward all covered up, who's the primary receiver on that play. Ward a tight end is six feet tall, 275 pounds. Point after for Alex Hanks. And with under four minutes to go in the first quarter, it's 14-0 Georgia Southern. Some improvisation, Jay. And into the end zone. Second time tonight for Ellison. It's called the world's shortest suspension bridge. Yes. Do we know that for a fact? But regardless, it's an interesting tradition they have going across the bridge. Good practice. The Mark Daly. I told you about going on the road now. You gotta respect your house. It's beautiful, Eagle Creek. Yes. Beautiful. Worthy from the seven. Just back to the 20. Well, during our last break, just a minute or two ago, we had a proposal on the field. And she said yes. I give him style for the presentation point. She came out and thought she was part of a fan contest throwing the ball into a bucket. She missed the shot. They said, we have a consolation prize for you. And the proposal down on one knee, first class. That was quality. I like the presentation. Even though the promotion was sponsored by a local jeweler. She still which, didn't know. <laughs> which may have been a little bit of a giveaway. <laughs> Silvers. Back to the line of scrimmage, tackled by Lydia Richardson, the defensive end, number 54. Now, Troy, their offense never took the field. Their first drive, the opening kickoff, was fumbled by Worthy. The Eagles took that in for a touchdown, then they failed to convert on a third and back three, and went a three and out on their second possession. This is the first carry of the night for Brandon Burks. Burks, who's 5'9", 203 pounds, so smaller back than Chun, but still carries a pretty good load. Troy won at seven this year, the lone win against New Mexico State on their homecoming game. Troy, Alabama, and Larry Blakeney announced he will retire at the end of the season after his 24th season as the head coach. Plenty of time for Silvers, there's some contact there, wanting a flag. It was Katie Enfield, the receiver. Coverage there for Antoine Williams. I think Enfield has reason to be upset. Let's take another look. I thought it was great coverage. Take a look. You see him here. In coverage, he knows the route's coming within five yards. You can touch him a little bit. He undercuts that ball. Tight man-to-man -man coverage. Small window to throw the ball to. Pretty good defense by Antoine Williams. A two, three and outs to start the game. As well as the fumble kickoff for Tony. Ryan K going to do the rugby punt. Butler receives it at the 39. He's immediately pushed out of bounds there. By John Johnson. 37-yard punt with no return. Georgia Southern's offense comes back when we return. So with their first rankings, there's Fabian Upshaw now at quarterback handing off. And Rita on the carry. Rita on the carry up to the 40. Troy oh, saying they have the football. And I haven't seen a signal yet, but Detroit defense is running off the football field. They have said yes. Recovered by Troy. Mitchell Rowland, linebacker, recovering it for the Trojans. So that perhaps is the break the Trojans have been looking for as they get a turnover on Georgia Southern side of the field. Just Rita trying to run through a number of white jerseys. Keeping the legs going as the knee down. Oh, great job coming over with the strip before he goes down. Daniel Warren, the walk-on linebacker, is forced into playing tonight because Mark Wilson is out. Way to create a turnover. Maybe help jumpstart this offense. So each team now with a turnover tonight. And Troy with their best field position. Beginning at the Georgia Southern 39. Burks motions into the backfield. He has the carry running left, trying to hit the edge, and does so. And run up to the 32-yard line before he's tackled by Edwards. Uh, but what's that say for the rest of the college football? I thought Oregon should have gotten that number four spot in my personal projection, but they're on the outside looking in. 
Here's the first first down for the Troy offense tonight. A six-yard run for Burks to move the chains. As you say, Jay, a lot of that's going to play out in the SEC West. I think a lot of folks are like scratching their head. Hey, I watched that game. Not in Baton Rouge. Well, this didn't look all that great. Here's Burks lowering the shoulder. And nice run inside the 20. Here's a chance, Jay. And obviously, the first. 13 minutes of this first quarter not go Troy's way at all. I think it's sticking the end zone here. They're right back in the football game. Take advantage of the turnover, and I think they figured out with the man-to-man -man coverage, their backs are turned. Schematically, they're finding running lanes. Silver's keeping. He's going to run. He's a mobile quarterback, Jay, but he's been banged up a little bit recently, and Larry Blakeney and his staff told us, hey, you know, if Silver's can't run 100%, we're not going to probably run him as much as we normally would, but he didn't run the football there. And well, that's smart because this kid has a bright future. I'm tremendously impressed with what I see watching him, the throws he's able to make, the command of the offense, and the escape ability that he has shown. Two big bodies in the backfield, Josh Anderson. And Jordan Chun, worthy in motion. They hand it off to Chun. Chun battling his way all the way to the 11-yard line before being tackled by Edwin Jackson. They convert on third short and another Troy first down. Chun's a throwback runner. We talk about him with 234 pounds, squaring his shoulders. Very difficult for the first defender to bring him down. You pretty much have to do like Edwin Jackson did there, catch him on the side. But normally it's too late because he accumulated three or four yards by then. Burks running right, cuts it back inside the 10, and he may have lost the football. <laughs> Quickly peeling away the bodies, and Troy does recover. A little sigh of relief there for the Trojans and head coach Larry Blakeney. And one of the things that, that frustrates me when you watch tape of Troy a little bit, they can move the ball schematically. They seem to get a little confused sometimes with what they're trying to accomplish and changing running backs from Chung to Burks and Burks to Chung. You don't really develop a rhythm, but they've got the ball in great position right now. Get ready for Halloween on Halloween Eve. First quarter belonged to Georgia Southern with Ellison's touchdown runs, and it's 14 nothing. Look at that bald eagle up close before the game. And with that beak and talons, all I could think was that animal could do some serious damage if things went back. And what a great tradition when they release it before the game. They call it the most exciting 30 seconds of the game. They do a fantastic job. And the Eagles' nickname is Flight. Flight, nice. <laughs> well, that last pass, a little bit of a flight over the head of Katie Edenfield. Is Troy trying to stick it in the end zone? And this is what I talked about before the break. Where's your identity? You got the ball on the seven yard line, 234 pound runner in Chum. Why not force feet to run down the middle? Towards the end zone, a well out of reach of the intended receiver, B.J. Chitty. Look at our first quarter numbers. Each team turned it over once, but all the points belong to Georgia Southern. You know, it's been a running the ball effectively. Brandon Burks has 29 yards rushing for Troy. That's half their offense already. Georgia Southern's been smooth sailing, except for the turnover. Offensively, they've done a fantastic job. Ryan K, 6 of 8 on his field goal attempts this year, as long being a 47-yarder. Last week, hit a couple of field goals against South Alabama from 38 and 43, and nails that from 25 to get the Trojans on the scoreboard. Well, Larry Blakeney, I'm sure, would have preferred 7, but they do pick up their first points of the night. How many things have, has he seen in his career, Coach? He's seen raucous road trip environments. He's seen the come from behind victories, and he's done it in a number of ways. And being in that company there, the last drive was eight plays. The first six plays of the drive were all six runs. The last two were incompletions. Had to settle for the field goal. That tells me, Jay, that running the football may be the answer for them tonight. Continue to run it. I, mean, I really think that. Chun is going to be a matchup problem. When we talk to Georgia Southern, what do you worry about when you look at Troy on offense? And they said, big number 36. We don't know his name, but we're telling you it's Jordan <laughs> Chun. Getting those no shoulders squared, running downhill. I think you do him a favor when you take him out of the game because he is simply a load to bring down. Jed Salomon picks off Derek Keaton from a couple yards deep. Ooh, bumps, but stayed on his feet and then is pulled down. 
Back around the 11 yard line. Initially hit by Shaq Beverly that slowed up the momentum. So the starting field position for Georgia Southern getting progressively worse. And we begin this time at their own 16 is where they'll say the forward progress took them. Last possession with Rita Fumble. Ellison with two rushing touchdowns on their first two possessions of the night. We have seen Fabian Upshaw. There's some plays at quarterback as well for the Eagles. Not surprised by that. Rita comes in motion into the backfield. Fake the handoff to him. Ellison running left. Cut down at the 24 by Montrese Kitchens for three safety number one. Montrese Kitchens makes the stop. You talk about how they're going to stop the run. Well, Montrese Kitchens is the leading tackler for this team right there. You see him right there, number one. Watch him follow the ball. How you find do a become a lead tackler from the free safety position? Have him motor. Ball running away from him. He still managed to go chase him down. They're going to try and get him involved in that number count, keep him close to the line of scrimmage. And anytime he makes a tackle, that's a bad thing because he's the free safety, but he is a good one. He does have five tackles tonight to lead Troy and leads him on the season with 61 now. Ellison smashed down by Sam Levy. Levy going to see more playing time tonight with Mark Wilson out and he makes a big play there. Big play. Sam Levy was a big recruit for the Trojans and his opportunity to step up. This is a red shirt freshman from the Washington, D.C. area. This is good penetration. Making him stretch out that option and then assignment football. He was responsible for the quarterback and put a hit on him. Maybe an upshot now in a quarterback. You saw Ellison run off the field. Last play lost three, so it's a third down and four from their own 22. Upshaw, quarterback draw. It's a block. Down the sideline, has the first down, and Morn brought down at the 43. Guess who made the tackle? Montrese Kitchens. And as you said, Jay, that's not good for Troy to have Kitchens making all these tackles. That one after a 21 yard game. Free safety is lead tackle, but they just missed him. I watched the missed tackle. You're going to see right here. Poor angle by the linebacker. You have to be in position to make that tackle. But a poor angle taken. Quarterback knowing how to get to the outside, and that's why. This is the defense that has struggled against the run. Missed tackles and poor pursuit angles. That's Dean in motion. Ramsby. Not much. Maybe a yard. Maybe a dive ball. The tackle number six. Look at the play selection for Georgia Southern. 81% rush. And they lead the nation at 402 yards a game in that category. This is a team that values running the football. They value option football. And they're just doing it from shotgun formation, but still very effective. Upshaw running again this time straight ahead and get a couple. Deion Lee stopping him. That's 24 plays tonight for Georgia Southern, and 21 of those have been rushes. That gets some of the other top rushing teams in the nation, and Army Navy run at 84, 85% of the time. Georgia Southern not far behind. And Bob Davy at New Mexico running the option. Upshaw looking to throw. Now we'll pull it down and run past the linebacker and pick up the first down at the 45 of Troy. Ten-yard run for the sophomore from Titusville, Florida. And this is good recognition. He realized that they were playing man-to-man -man coverage across the board. Anytime you have man-to-man -man coverage, nobody accounts for the quarterback. So take a look at the defenders you're going to see here, here, and here. The linebacker core. Which one of them in the ball snap is looking at the quarterback? They're all focused on the wide receivers, and then he gets to the outside, makes one defender miss, picks up the first down. That's good recognition. Upshaw, option keeping. 
There he goes again. Has a block from Showers, the wide receiver. And a run all the way to the 18-yard line. Again, it's Kitchens with the Troy tackle. This is a 26-yard gain for Upshaw. And this can't happen. Somebody's responsible for the quarterback in option football. You get a good look at number 10, Don Girl Harris, going to the running back. So where was the inside linebacker? It should have been Daniel Warren coming from the inside. It was not there. It became a foot race to the corner at Upshaw. Teams normally respect his arm a little bit more, but he has running ability as well. He has 59 rushing yards tonight. Ellison has 49, so the quarterback, the two quarterbacks combined 108 rushing yards so far for the Eagles. Upshaw pitches this time to Scott. Almost and that's what you have eluded to Lewis, but the tackle made. See, when you bottle up an option team, what do you see first? You see a quarterback that gets hit and a running back that has to make somebody else miss in the open space. This is good assignment football. Don't worry about the running back. Hit the quarterback. He gets to the quarterback. Then you have to make a good open field tackle in space. Good job. That's how you defend an option attack. And Jay, the term I often hear when you're trying to defend an option is eye discipline. Yep, you have to see it. And you have to believe what you see and don't get fooled. Upshot swings it out to Ramsby. To the 15, inside the 15, down to the 11. Wrapped up by Jaquadrian Lewis. This is a really good job by Montre Crockett, the wide receiver. Design screen, but watch him seal off the edge right here, not allowing the outside linebacker to get anywhere close. Look, right there, seal it. Fight, fight, fight. Right away, it's positive yardage, and you give the ball to Ramsey in space, he's going to pick up positive yards for you. Yeah, it looked like there may have been a face mask there at the end. I think the crowd was watching that as we were as well, and we reacted to it. No flag on the play. It was a gain of nine, so it's a third down at four. Ramsby. Oh, he's going to be close. Dive the tackle. With that spot, he probably has the first down. Very close. We're going to measure. And even if it's close and they're a little short, I can't imagine head coach Willie Fritz not taking the opportunity to put seven points on the board compared to three settling for the field goal. Although you may say, hey, put the field goal on the board, get back to a two touchdown lead. But for the team that averages 400 yards rushing, you have to think gaining a, anything less than a yard is walking apart. To get it by the nose of the football. First in goal, Georgia Southern. And they Rams be the back. And Shaw goes to the line. Up some instructions and now a flag. There have been some movement. There was time on the play clock still. A referee Kevin Stein. Full start. Offense number 46. Lyman was covered up and shifted. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That's Cody Rediger, the tight end. You heard the explanation. I was trying to hear, but I mean, rarely do you see that call before the ball is snapped. Right. It's a. Uh... Unique, but once you get down and put your hand in the ground for that stance, you become almost like a lineman unless somebody uncovers you. So they lose five there, and it's first and goal now from the 12. Showers in motion. Keeping Upshaw. And probably a touchdown saving tackle there by Brandon Timmons. Gain of eight for Upshaw. I mean, the quarterbacks are just more athletic than the linebacker core right now for Troy. Missed tackles and good effort coming back and making the tackle by Brandon Timmons, but good job by Upshaw with the ball fake. Call his own number, making a hard cut to the middle, almost getting into the end zone. And that number, number 13, has five rushes for 68 yards. Upshaw gives it up. Ramsby's going to. Jog into the end zone for his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. 
of two rushing TDs last week against Georgia State at 92 yards rushing. This can't, this can't happen. They just overcommitment to the run on the right side, coming out of position. Ball state of the defensive end. And I don't know if Ramsey will get an easier touchdown run than he just saw right there. Point after for Hanks. 12 play drive and went 84 yards. Third touchdown of the night for the Eagles, who needed 21 to 3. Yeah, I mean, you know, it seems like Baylor lost at the wrong time and all the team. Right now, there's two undefeated and it comes down to who the other best one-loss teams in the country. There's some good ones here, and unfortunately for the Big 12, you've got Oklahoma, Baylor, TCU. Ruben from the four, cuts it back to the 22 and a flag. Comes in late. A call from our referee Kevin Stein on coming. Fearing the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 15, 10 yards from the end of the run. Push down. Come out. So that will cost Troy 10 yards off that return. Timeout on the field with 7.07 to play first half. Beautiful campus here in Statesboro. 7.07 to play in the second half. In his first half, that is. And there's a run for Kari Franklin. Up to the 23-yard line. They lost 10 yards on the return due to the penalty, so that's a gain of 11 for Franklin. He'll get some of that real estate back. That will really be the young freshman quarterback, Brandon Silver's best friend, if they can establish the running game. Now, earlier in the first half, we saw them give Georgia Southern trouble coming out of this formation. Franklin once again pushes his way up near the 30. Seven-yard gain. Franklin, a senior, 5'6", 180-pounder. From Georgia, Valdosta, Georgia. I was quarterback. The, the one, high school days, yeah. Now that last formation it worked on consecutive plays, and then they change it up. And I don't really know the rhyme or reason why offensive coordinator Kenny Edenfield decided to change, but it seemed like Georgia Southern hadn't figured it out yet. I would have kept that same formation and look. All right, Franklin has the first down run. To the 35, Franklin, who already has his undergraduate degree, one of six on this Troy roster that have already picked up their undergrad degrees. He's going to head to the sideline, but it's a nice running there by Kari Franklin. And regardless of you know, whatever the personnel is or the formation they're using, they're having success running the football. For the most part, they got away from the perimeter running, and they're starting to run right down the middle of the field. So Ken Edenfield there, the offensive coordinator up in the booth. And there's a long pass looking for Worthy. Incomplete. Worthy can go, and that's where I think Silver needs improvement on the deep ball. The pass is over 15 yards down the field. Doesn't complete a lot of them. But that's something that can come with the timing and the more reps you get, the more game experience that you get. So often the young quarterback gets excited when you see somebody open deep. You tend to overthrow it, as you saw there. The overthrow the wide receiver. Four straight incompletions from Silvers. We haven't seen Brian Holmes tonight for Troy. We we're not told of any possible reason why he may be out. I mean, Worthy have been their top two receivers this year. Here's Silvers looking to throw again and dumps it off. Oh, and wow. Sean tackled in the open field by Edwin Jackson, the middle linebacker. Oh, this was the perfect play call. They had a screen, design screen call. And you're going to watch Tommy Stevens, number 70. Watch him miss it. He's going to pull out here. All he has to do is get a body on the linebacker coming underneath. This play is designed perfectly. Get out there and hit him. Missed right there. Tackle for a loss. Oh, they had that play set up nicely. And lost two, third and 12. Five receivers, three to the bottom of your screen. Silvers is 
sack back at the 25. Second sack of the year for sophomore Jamal Johnson, who's a Statesboro, Georgia native in the Southeast Bullock High School. You we'll see him just collapse the pocket. Just a three man rush. Not a good sign. A good hard rush from the middle of the field. Anytime you've got a motor like that, and Jamal Johnson, number 51, beating his man one on one over the center. No place to go with the football for Silver. Not enough time. South Lorraine, Ryan K with the punt, a low punt. Rugby Styles will roll all the way inside the 40 down at the 37. That's a 37 yard punt for no return. Watch ESPN. Ellison back at quarterback for Georgia Southern. Hit and immediately dropped there after the catch. Miles Campbell, his first catch of the night. How impressive was that? Ellison left the game in the middle of a series. Maybe an upshot comes in and they don't miss a beat. Sound fundamental coaching by offensive coordinator and defensive quarterback. Uh, sorry, quarterback coach Doug Roos. Motion goes Ward. Handed off Brito. Pushes that pile all the way to the 43. Kitchens with a tackle a gain of five. Jay, I guess my point would be when you have a option offense like this where the quarterback runs the football so much, they're going to get dinged up. They're going to miss a little time. It's you really almost have to have a quality second guy, don't you? Yeah, particularly in today's college football where the players are so much bigger in the game more momentum because they're running an option from five yards behind a lot of scrimmage and they're naturally gaining more speed than what you were used to seeing with the option attack when the quarterback is under center. Good to have quarterback by committee. Third to seven, six to seven on third down. They've rushed the football every time on third down. What's Ellison going to do? Spins around, now he throws, and he found his man for the catch in the first down. Crockett at the 46-yard line of Troy. You know, being a drop back pass, I always used to laugh when I saw option teams trying to throw the football. But this is entertaining. I mean, what a great move by Ellison. And watch him direct traffic. He knows what he wants. Come back, come back. Throws a strike to Monte Crockett. And that's a good job of coming back to the football, coming back to your quarterback, keeping your feet in bound, securing the football. You can they practice. They, they must practice throwing the football a little bit in practice compared to your typical triple option team. It's a 13-yard gain. First down. Now Ellison pitches. Crockett running left. Patiently makes his way to the 30-yard line. Picked up a nice block from wide receiver B.J. Johnson on the edge for a gain of 15. And this is a great job with the with the misdirection, how they set up. You're going to see Crockett's going to come in here, then he's going to come back out. And watch them keep the relationship to run the option. A great job by B.J. Johnson, but he comes in and out. He's now the option guy. Gets to the outside. You're going to watch B.J. Johnson come in with a block to secure the edge. That's very tough to defend. They just don't know where it's coming from. They give you one look. You think they'll be traditional with the running back. And the running back serves as a dive man. They bring in a wide receiver with more speed on the perimeter. First down throw. Ellison to the end zone and off the hands of Crockett. I was just about to say that Crockett has touched the ball three times tonight, and each time turned it into a first down. That not only would have been another first down, but he might have scored. They were trying to reward him for the good job he was doing. He had a nice block earlier. We saw the last catch. Then we saw the reverse, and this is a good throw. But you have to catch that ball. Oh, wow. That just comes from being an option team, and they're just not used to catching the ball that often in football games. But good throw by Kevin Ellison. And Crockett has not been a prime target for Ellison. Well, that really has been Zach Walker who's not playing tonight. B.J. Johnson and Kentrelli Showers, the main three. Crockett with only two catches on the year. Coming in, here's the pitch. Breida. Get out of bounds inside the 20 or about the 20-yard line. Breida on the carry for Georgia. That's number 37, Jacquez. Jacquez Young hit him hard. Coming right at you. Look out. Felt like a part of that play there. And that's one of the tough things. When you have a lot of speed on the field, and speed collides with speed, collisions. Breeder, we know, he likes to step on the gas pedal. 
They've done a decent job of containing him thus far tonight. Well below his nine and a half yard per carry average, but it's just a matter of time to get that feeling. Ellison keeping. Fumbles down at the 15. Montreal's Kitchens racking up the tackles here in the secondary for Troy in this first half. You don't want your free safety becoming your leading tackler. And that's been a theme for Troy, not only this evening, but on the season. Eagles have been perfect in the red zone so far tonight. Three times in, three touchdowns. It's Crockett in motion. Ellison keeping. Makes a late pitch, loose football, and it looks like Troy has it. And when you play assignment football, you can force the systematic approach of the option to get disrupted. And that was a good job there. You saw Ellison confused on what to do with the football. And then they start to lose their timing and their rhythm. It's a good job of just chasing down the quarterback and then coming up. Make the hit. Mitchell Rowland does a good job. And they have another turnover and they, they capitalize. But that's what you have to do. I mean, you must play the assignment football. Your teammate must be there. You cannot lose leverage. You can't lose contain. And they did a good job of stretching that ball. Rowland with the recovery. 44 seconds left in this first half. Duty on the other side of the break. Okay, now the replay, we did take a look at this last play. The question here, Jay, was what's this a forward pass or a lateral? Now you see Crockett and Ellison's pitch almost kind of looks like he goes sideways, maybe a little further back, but there's no way with the video from that angle that you could overturn the call on the field, which was a fumble. There's not enough to confirm it. It had it been a forward lateral then would have been considered an incomplete pass and Georgia Southern would have kept the football but ruling on the field stands which I think they got it right. Silver's keeping near the 20. Deshante Gallon with the tackle. Deshante whose nickname is Ironhead. And it's looking like Troy is just going to be content Jay to want to play or two more and head to the locker room. And this game could have easily been 28 to 3 going into the halftime. That's why we just want to regroup. Don't risk the turnover and don't risk allowing Georgia Southern to put more points on the board. Silvers tackled back at the 19, and that's going to take us to the end of the first half. Three touchdown runs for Georgia Southern, two for their quarterback Ellison, one from Ramsby, and Ryan King, 25 yard field, the only points of the half. For Troy. And that takes care of half number one from Statesboro. 21 3 Georgia Southern. Now let's send it to the studio. Brendan Fitzgerald and Charles Arbuckle with the college football halftime report. All right, guys, thanks. 21 to 3, the lead right now for Georgia Southern doing what they do, running the football well. That Jay spent all afternoon in the hotel room doing it. Was I've, got, that I've got skills. I've got skills. <laughs> Happy Halloween a few hours early from Statesboro with. Jay Walker, I'm Mark Daly. If not for a couple of turnovers, it could have been much uglier for Troy. The Cavs talk about the first half in which Georgia Southern simply dominated, but Troy coming down the road, he cannot fumble the opening kickoff. A good team's going to make you pay, and that's exactly what Georgia Southern did. And Kevin Ellison's first touchdown run in the first half. That one was a six-yard run, and then tried the, uh, was thinking about the Tebow jump pass there? It wasn't there, but he's such a good athlete, able to get to the end zone anyway. And L.A. Ramsey, one of the easiest touchdowns they'll ever score. Just bad perimeter defense by Troy. Right before the half, this was the key. An opportunity to go up to 28 points on the board. They turned the football over, and that's why they only have 21 points. But what a dominating performance by Georgia Southern on offense and the offensive utility of Troy. And Ryan Case, 25-yard field goal, the only points for Troy in the half. They only converted one third down in the first half. And that's bad. Four first downs total. And you talk about Georgia Southern. What do they do? They run the football better than anybody else in the country. They average 401 yards rushing per game. In the first half, they had 198 yards. So they have to figure out a way to make up that extra two yards so they can get to their average. Crockett elected to take it out from five yards deep, and he just makes it barely past the 15-yard line. Mark, that was that was a joke saying they have to make up the two yards to get to their average. I mean, yeah. When you average 401, and you only, you know, technically they should have exactly 200 and a half yards, but 
think 198 yards on the ground, they, they won't complain. Kevin Ellison with the two touchdown runs in the first half. Now 10 rushing touchdowns on the season. Is three of six through the air. Not many yards, just 11. They haven't had to throw the football really much tonight. Give it to Breed on first down. Getting a block on the edge from Showers, the wide receiver. Trey Hall, the quarterback, running Breed out of bounds after a pickup of three yards. Well, that was a simple three yard run, but that was an edge of your seat three yard run. He stretched that ball all the way to the sideline and he kept looking for a running lane. Give credit to the Troy defense because he wanted to plant and make a hard cut upfield, make it a foot race. But they did a really good job of forcing him to the sideline, playing good assignment football. Ramsby and Rita in the backfield this time with Ellison. Giving it to L.A. Ramsby. Just shy of the 25 for L.A., whose actual first name is Alfred. The L.A. comes in for little Alfred from back in his youth. Montrese Kitchens has been the leading tackler for Troy in this game and on the season is the player that's down for the Trojans. At 10 first half tackles. We know he's not afraid to mix it up in their kitchens. Good looking football player, the junior from Waynesboro, Georgia. Anytime you get an Alabama kid playing at school in Alabama coming back to his home state, you know he's gonna put extra effort out there. We were talking about LA Rams a little bit earlier. One thing that people don't realize, former quarterback. Oh. Came to Troy as a came sorry, came to Georgia Southern as a quarterback and Converted over and realized with Ellison and Upshaw <laughs> wasn't going to get too much playing time. Said, I'll go play running back. And they found a great diamond in the rough because he's a perfect change of pace back for the running attack they have. Well, we mentioned it near the top of the telecast tonight. Uh, the Troy defense is already without Tyler Roberts. Defensive end out with a high ankle sprain. And middle linebacker Mark Wilson out with concussive symptoms. Good to see Kitchens get up under his own power. Coach Blakeney, one and seven on the season, been that type of year. Coming to a game where you need your best players to show up. You lose your number one D lineman, you lose your number one linebacker. Now you lose your number one player in the secondary. I don't know how you. I don't know how you can coach away yeah. in situations like this. Well, you can't, can you? Third down and two. Power running. Rita. Up by Billy Dobbs. And there is another player down, but this is Georgia Southern. The player on his back. We will step aside. Abnormalities of some of Parkinson's disease. And so it's a really scary, a scary thing that you see. But we can objectively determine that if that kid has gone beyond at the point where they're recovered, they can put, be put back on the field. I'm obviously very happy to see our, our young man get back up and uh, get on that thing. And uh, hopefully he's going to be all right. And I'm sure if you look at it in terms of, of the monetary amount, it took dollars to get this thing going Absolutely. all the way over. It seems like it's, you're satisfied that it's worth the investment. Oh, that, that, there's no money. Uh, uh, there's not enough money that you can put into something like that to keep our, our student athletes safe and keep them uh, where we don't have these type of injuries and, and to be able to protect them from the long-term damages of an injury like this. Now, obviously, your, your student athletes, th this benefits them. But what other information, what other either institutions in the Sun Belt, around college football, or around college athletics at all, when will they be brought into the system as well? Where does it go from here, I guess, is what I'm well, asking. Well, I, mean, I think the sky's the limit. I mean, you know, we're able to determine based off the, that, that impact telemetry system when an when a athlete has an impact. And you got to understand that the impact is that the baseline, that the threshold is 98 times the force of gravity. 
And 98 G's is what directly triggers this, and it sends an, an alarm to the trainers that they can pull a, a kid off long before seeing an injury like this and be able to evaluate that person. But, I mean, you can, you can take this to the next level. We have soldiers in the field that are, that are subject to concussions as well. If you can have this sort of telemetry system in a football helmet, you can also put this sort of telemetry in a, in a soldier's helmet and have it beamed uh, across, the, across the world to a, a center where they can determine concussion uh, all the field of battle as well. So I think the sky's the limit to where we go with this. And President Kill, we mentioned they are student athletes. So when something like this happens, you know, the young man that's down right now, I'm assuming this automatically helps out in terms of the classroom study. You're not going to ask a young man that's had a 98G type force hit to the head to take a final exam that could jeopardize any type of thing academic. Do you have programs in place to put everything together systematically? Well, we, we're just really getting started with, it, with this whole program. And our main concern right now is the health of the, the student athletes. And, uh, and that's the first thing we're concerned with, the, the thing we're going to address most. But uh, I, we're really doing the cutting edge, I think, research on this, that once we get this data and we get to start publishing this data, it will help other programs be able to, to adjust their programs uh, to deal with this infection. I commend you on everything that you're doing. And thank you so much. As a former athlete, I really do appreciate you. And as a father, I appreciate you for taking these cutting edge to get us going in the right direction. Well, we, we want to win football games, but the health of our students is the most important thing. Well, we hope certainly that, that James Dean is fine. While we have you here, though, let's just yeah. talk about that football team and what uh, your new coach, Coach Fritz, has, uh, has brought some excitement to Statesboro, Georgia. Well, I don't think you got enough time for me to talk about our football team. And, you know, we, we, we want to make a conscious decision to make the move to the FBS, and we wanted to do that for a lot of reasons. And if, uh, for, the main reason was to give us a chance to use athletics as a vehicle to put the rest of the university on the national stage. I mean, the, the, these kids that, that perform need to be able to perform on the national stage, but to get that Georgia Southern name out to, across this country was the main thing for us, and this has been a great opportunity for us to do it. Absolutely. I mean, have you seen everything? You know, I'm an FCS guy coming from FCS football. The name Georgia Southern meant something. All those circles. I'm sure it wasn't easy because tradition's big here. One thing I've learned about Statesboro, Georgia, tradition's big. I'm sure it wasn't an easy call, but it seemed like it was the right call to make, particularly with the success you're having year one yeah. in the no doubt. I don't, I don't think you'll find a, a program. In fact, I know you won't find an SES program has been more successful than we have. The no program at the SES level has got six national championships. Uh, to be able to move that, our fans expect nothing but, but perfection. You know, Eric Russell started that when he came here back in the early 80s to really start football. And we believe in that, and our fans want nothing less, and we want to give them that sort of team. But I think we got the right coach and staff and the right players right now that's going to take us, to, take us and be able to perform that next level. Well, second down at seventh play here, and Ellison putting it in the air. And That's the way. pass <laughs> at the 35 yard line. He can tell us showers. That's a, hell of, that's a heck of a combination right there, I tell you. Ellison and showers. Yeah, yeah, they're getting you better than that. You, you need to slow down, President <laughs> Kill. You, you know why? One, you're trying to take my job for the captain. That's fine. But two, we talked about tradition. Now, tradition of Georgia Southern football is not yeah. balls being thrown all over the air. This is ground <laughs> chuck. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, you know, we're playing big boy football right now. I mean, you know, you can't, I mean, triple option is great. And as, as Eric Russell said, it's a great equalizer. But at the same time, you got to be able to spread that out. And we, we run the triple options, you know, not under center from the pistol and shotgun. You be able to spread it out. And be able to throw that. It's going to spread that defense out a little bit. And they're going to think twice about, you know, keeping it close to protect that run when you think we're going to throw the ball. Well, going deep for showers that time in the end zone. And a flag did come out. We'd like to see that now. You know, you mentioned Dirk Russell, who was the coach that came from Georgia. Pass interference. In Georgia. Defense, number 34. 15 yards in the previous spot. Automatic. Let's take a look at the play, and then I'll set you back All up right. on Coach Russell's legacy here. Some pass interference on Ethan Davis, the cornerback on the coverage. Slide in the pocket. I mean, that's going tell you all day. Today's college football, the way they're protecting the quarterback, you cannot take that step. Ball's gone. You have to pull off of them. Yeah. And in the secondary, they had pass interference that we quite didn't catch. But two flags right there. And all of a sudden, we bring President Kill to the booth, and, and we're at Air Eagle now. <laughs> Eagles are taking flight. They're throwing the football. They're going to throw you, it again right now? It's contagious. i tell you what. Straight ahead run all the way up to the 11. <laughs> L.A. Ramsby with the carry. Irk Russell was the coach. He was the defensive coordinator at Georgia. And in 1981 came here and reestablished football at Georgia Southern. He sure did. And, and, you know that he's such a legend, such an incredible coach. And, 
in this play here. There yeah. you go. Get in there. Almost into the end zone. Yeah. L.A. Rams. He just short here. But he needs all football back. And he was such a, the only regret I have of being president at this point in time is I never got a chance to be here. I think mean, he's such a legend, such a tradition we have here. And, and these guys all play because they know the tradition that the players came before them have established. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to see the, the top end run. Ramsby a little hitch there in his giddy up getting off the field. Breida is back out in the backfield for the Eagles. Breida's been just after the tournament for us this year. And then motion him out. Watch either quarterback draw. They may try to Tim Tebow pass again. Ellison looking oh, for or, or, or just running in the end zone. <laughs> That's the quarterback <laughs> draw version of that. That, that was the quarterback right, draw. Right. Third rushing touchdown of the night for Ellison. First uh, Dr. Keel tried to steal Jay's job, and that time he took mine. He <laughs> took your job of setting it up here, but they set it up with the fake pass earlier. This time here, you catch him peeking in the backfield. They're looking for the pass. Just go hard nose football, straight ahead, push him around. Another touchdown for the Eagles. That's that, that that's seven it. points they left on the board before the half. That's exactly why spreading that offense out is going to call that defense to step back a little bit, and you can have to run that pass out. I've got a challenge for you. So it's 28 points right now. I've been down here in Statesboro learning something. I got some things that I think people need to know. And I want you to judge if the things you need to know about Georgia Southern football. Welcome to Sumba to Georgia Southern football. So I say, if you're going to come down here, you got to know Jason Foster. Is. Absolutely. One of the more. You got to know Paul Johnson is because he was responsible for some of those championships. Now, number five gets unique now. You have to know who. This Adrian Peterson is. I know who AP is very well. That's the real AP. Right yeah, we now. don't call him the other one. They call him down here. They That's call right. him this Adrian Peterson. Number four, you got to know about Ham and the Ham Bone. <laughs> Tracy Ham, all the legendary stuff that he's done here. Number three, Irk Russell. You talked about Absolutely. him. You don't mention the program without mentioning Irk Russell. Number two, now we're going to get interested. Number two, how about beautiful Eagle Creek? Absolutely. I mean, no, nothing better than that. Nothing more nasty than Eagle Creek water. I actually put a jug of that on my on my uh, desk one time, and nine months later, they threw the plastic jug and got all over the desk. So, Earth Bros <laughs> used to drink that stuff. I, and the number one thing you must know about Georgia Southern football is the uniforms stay plain for a reason. That's, That's tradition. Right. That's tradition. What, what do I get on my homework assignment from trying to educate the viewers on for, new to the Sun Belt about Georgia Southern football? Well, Did I, I get I a think, passing grade? I think you just got an A on that one. I got an A. That's, That's like the first one I've gotten in a couple decades. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it I'm, takes, man. I'm, Whatever it takes. Uh, be careful. I'll ask you for an honorary degree now if you're going to start giving out anything. <laughs> you're going to have to do a little bit better than that. Than degree. We'll work with you. We're going to do a little bit better than that. That's what you're no, no, that's been fantastic. Yeah, Mark, I did my homework. I was studying. Nice and, and I'm I impressed. So impressed with the hospitality. This is first class. Everything that you all showed us down here. And I think uh, I speak for the whole crew. It's been a pleasure coming down here. Well, it's been a pleasure having you. And uh, as I, you know, the, you, you can't get much better tradition uh, than the Georgia Southern football. And I mean, Oak Russell said it best is that, you know, you, you ain't going to get no better than this. And, and you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Dr. Brooks Kill, the Georgia Southern president. Uh, thanks so much. Congratulations. Congratulations on what you have going on Thank down you here. Thank you very much. And also Appreciate with the uh, production of the Helmet Impact Telemetry System and all the good that's doing. Well, we appreciate it very much. Thanks for being there. Look forward to seeing you next year. Our pleasure. 28-3, Georgia Southern leading. Only in this third quarter. Dontrell Pruitt. Now the quarterback. Handed off to Jordan Chun. So a little change at the helm here. For Troy, uh, be the junior out of Laurel, Mississippi, threw an opportunity. Georgia Southern now upping the lead 28 to 3 for that nine play 84 yard drive. Chan in the backfield, high snap. Good keeping. They quite get to the edge and turn that corner. Stop to the 28 by Bernard Dawson. Makes it in. I think one of the reasons we're seeing Pruitt in the game, we knew coming in that last week Brandon Silver had the nurse a sore back the whole time at halftime. One thing that happens toward halftime if you're a little bit banged up, those injuries start to tighten up. And realizing they only had three points on the board, they decided to make a change and go with Pruitt, utilize the running game a little bit more. 
Good is going to take off, and he has the first down across the 40 out near the 44-yard line. Antoine Williams had a chance to get him, but missed him, and it goes for a 15-yard run. Well, Antoine Williams leads his team with tackles for losses. You're going to see him just shoot the gap right here, and I just want one question. How'd he miss him? Antoine Williams, this is your seventh tackle for a loss that you had an opportunity at. You let him just go right by. Oh, no. Troy now averaging 5.6 yards per rush, and there's a long pass worthy incomplete. A little late tug there by the defender Darius Jones after when they had an opportunity to catch that football. Right back to the line from the Trojans on second down and 10. Pruitt threw a fastball looking for Emmanuel Thompson and incomplete in midfield. Matt Dobson with the coverage. Pruitt now at quarterback. Not a lot of time. Quarterback position, obviously, with Brandon Silvers this year, the starter. But when Pruitt has thrown the football this year, a 59% completion percentage. One TD, one INT on the year. Thing you see about Georgia Swell, so an obvious pass situation, heavy, heavy dose of zone coverage. Brandon Burks hit in the backfield, and he is tackled for a loss. Back at the 38, Juan Daniels and Antoine Williams, the first two to get to him. You know, and I mentioned they play a heavy dose of zone coverage. Why do they do that? So they can see everything in front of them. A team that's playing zone, you try and fool them with the run. They've got eyes in the backfield. So they're looking at it, able to sniff out the run. And that's a good job of redeeming yourself by Antoine Williams with this seventh tackle for loss on the season. I and K to punt. Trey Butler back at his own 25. Snap. K gets it away. A nice punt. Backs Butler all the way to his 12. Watch out there. Let's play on special teams. Number 17, Ron Adams. 40 yard punt by K. When I lived in Coffeyville, Kansas, and when I was in Warrensburg, Missouri, and it, down in Texas at Glenn Junior College. To love for Matt Breida. Up on the to the 20, tackled by Ethan Davis. He's a Kansas Davis, City Davis, area Davis. guy originally, so he's a bit bummed out today that his Royals came up short in Game, game 7 of the World Series last night. But most recently at Sam Houston State, reached a couple of FCS championship games. That was the very first thing he said to you, Mark, when he saw you. <laughs> Man, right. Tough one for the Royals last night, so uh, he really does watch the Royals. What a fantastic World Series. But when I talked to Coach Pitts, on the conference call. I told him I know you. Everybody else is surprised by you. I know you. This is Sam Houston State. This is your All-American running back they have by the name of Tim Flanders. You can fool the rest of America with this triple option that you're doing. But we've seen in the FCS playoffs. We've seen in the FCS championship game. You give him a running back that has great vision. He's going to find creative ways to get him in open space. And I think the direct beneficiary of that is Matt Breida right now. Breida's got probably a little bit more speed than Flanders had. But the numbers look the same. Ellison keeping. Nice blocking on the edge by Showers. And then Ellison the turned it back up field and is tackled by Darren Reddick, the safety. Now there's a Troy player down. Looks like Darren Reddick who made the tackle. who's a Houston native. He's a Juco transfer for Troy. Played at Butler Community College, which is in that same conference as Coffeyville. <laughs> Training staffs have been busy on both sides tonight. It's already a banged up Troy defense. Here tonight, Montreal's kitchen was helped off. Playing without Tyler Roberts and Mark Wilson tonight due to injuries, two of their key players on the on the defense. 
On Saturday at 7. Eight to three, Georgia Southern leading here with just under seven minutes to play in the third quarter. The only points of this second half come from the Georgia Southern quarterback Kevin Ellison's third touchdown run of the game. First to ten. Southern at their own 36. Handed off to Matt Brito. A yard before he stopped by Rod Adams, the free safety. Right Although they didn't pick up much yardage on that play, let's take a look at Man Ray Saint Amore one more time. From the center position, he plays with aggression that you just don't see. The ability to finish off defenders. You never see the person in front of him making the tackle. And you put him along with Garrett Fry, the left tackle. It's a very, very solid offensive line. And can't continue to tell you enough how impressed I am with their ability to get to the second level and finish off blocks. There's the pitch. Miles Campbell. And good block for B.J. Johnson, the wide receiver on that left edge. Trey Hall, Ron Adams with the stop for Troy. That's Campbell, the guy getting some extra playing time tonight. That's a pickup of eight yards. More speed on the perimeter. If Breed is not fast enough, and I think they realized early that one thing Troy was not going to do was allow Breed to really beat them. They're going to try and contain him. They need some other people to step up. And we saw Monte Crockett with some nice runs in the first half, so get the slot receivers involved in the running game. Breed up. Down at the 48. Okay. Deion Lee. What you see something that I've rarely seen before. If you're going to wipe out the pile, this is how you make the tackle. Watch number 17 in white, Rod Adams, the safety. Watch him come in, not hit the ball carrier. He's going to hit the blocker that's in front of him in the ball carrier. Oh! Hit the teammate in the waist. Down goes the pile. That's a bowling by Rod Adams there in the secondary. Sometimes you just got to hit whatever moving, man. <laughs> Sometimes you get a little friendly fire. Well, Georgia Southern now 10 of 11 on third downs tonight. The Detroit offense has had a big issue getting off the field. Detroit defense, that is. Sorry for L.A. Ramsby. The Cincinnati native. Goes for five yards. He had two rushing touchdowns last week against Georgia State. And has one tonight. He's a good running back. Average is five yards a carry. Normally that puts you in the starting lineup. For most schools, but with the season that Breed is having. But I like the way they use it. He's a good change of pace back for him, and you can tell by their styles. They're two different runners. Ellison, they pitch. Ramsby tackled for a loss by Jaquan and Lewis. It's a negative play there, loses four yards. Great field contained by Lewis. As we mentioned before, when you're stopping a triple option, you can't do it with just one player alone. Individual efforts won't get it done. Assignment football, and you just have to smother the option. And don't give them any lanes to cut up field. Now time of possession, basically two to one in favor of the Eagles. Through the yards, that ratio even further out of whack as far as Troy is concerned. And this is a big play. What you have to do right now is don't allow Georgia Southern pick up more than five yards. Because if so, they're going to go for it. The pass to the far side of the field. And they're right about in that range you were just talking about. Derek Keaton immediately tackled by Trey Hall. So you're right in midfield. You can hit a fourth down. He wants to go exactly how far away it is. I think the spot moved the back a little bit. He makes the catch. They didn't give him the forward progress. And I think they did not give him the forward progress. It only became a two-yard pickup. That forced him to punt it. But otherwise, See, Coach Fritz, he had his foot on the gas pedal. It was less than three yards. He was going to go for it. Brings out punter Ryan Nowicki. First punt of the night. Ruben back deep. Nowicki only punted one time last week in the Georgia State game. That went for 43 yards. Ruben, fair catch at the 10. That's a 37 yard punt with no return.
Yep, Ellison wanted to do so, and instead runs it into the end zone. Back here at Statesboro on this Halloween Eve, Thursday night, 28-3, Georgia Southern leading Troy with 2.26 left in the third quarter. A pleasant fall evening here. Southern Georgia. Goes on to prove it. Sky at the 25 yard line. John Johnson, he can play pass. That fell through it. He's back in there. Main in a quarterback. This is the reader. T tell me how wide open is this route right here? Football 101. Coming off the break. Sorry, the gentleman right there in the flat. 33. Get him the ball. You force a second level throw and you miss it. On first down, I always tell you all offensive coordinators want is a completed pass. Take what they give you on first down, then you can force the ball downfield. Pruitt dropped at the 12-yard line by Deshante Gallon. Is that Ironhead? That is Ironhead. Well, that means that hit's going to hurt. Turn your back to the defense, and Gallon has one of the hard hitters will make you pay. Take a look. He sees him. Good recognition. Ooh. Textbook. Third and eight, and only, only converted two of seven third downs tonight. Cook in his own end zone. Now he's going to take off. He needs to make the 20 for a first down. He won't get close. Dropped at the 12 by Edwin Jackson. This is a really good defense. They're, they're sound fundamentally. They understand offense and they pick it apart. You'll see Edwin Jackson, just a bit of linebacker. He's showing the speed of a defensive back, able to track down the quarterback, force him to change his angle and make the tackle. That's a good mobility for a 6'2", 230-pound inside linebacker. Leading tackler for Georgia Southern, Edwin Jackson, who's one of 10 children in his family. That's where the speed came from. <laughs> You gotta be looking out for yourself when you got nine other siblings. Hunt for K. The guard's out of bounds right at midfield. 37 yard punt. Well, Georgia Southern in their first full season as an FBS member, but actually began football back in 1924. Then in World War II, stopped the football program, resumed it in 1981. That's when Irk Russell came over from Georgia, reestablished the program. They won in 1985, their first of what is now six, or what was six FCS National Championships. 99, Adrian Peterson won the Peyton Award, and they also won a title. Their fifth at that point, Eddie Fritz now here in his first season. He had a man wide open, Greta, and Ellison underthrew him. We talked about that history there. So they're making the transition from a FCS powerhouse to now their FBS or Division One, what it's formerly known as, and undefeated conference play. But there's some questions that remain out there, Mark, that I know well, you studied well. They're obviously they're, they're eligible to win the conference, but being their first full season FBS, technically they're not eligible for a bowl. But there is a caveat to them. They could sneak in. And certain things happen, which is there's a bit of a laundry list of things that would have to happen. Here's a run for B.J. Johnson on the option. But here's the most important thing you'll need to know if they're going to get to a bowl game. If there's an insufficient number of deserving teams, you know, if there are not enough six-win teams, and a team in its final year of reclassification from FCS, which Georgia Southern is, they could meet the definition of a deserving team. So it's not out of the question, Jay, that they make it to a bowl this year. 
you have to see how it all shakes out. It's really, it's really tough to speculate at this point if that could happen. By them winning, they win this football game at night. They become bowl eligible kind of quickly, but you got some other teams in the top that are playing pretty good football. We talked about South Alabama at halftime and Louisiana Lafayette. So right away, those two teams you have to assume are going to become bowl eligible. Arkansas State some others. So it's interesting, but anytime you get caveats, things start to get complicated. We'll talk more about that as we get to the fourth quarter. The only scoring in that third quarter was Ellison's third touchdown run of the game. We're headed to the fourth at Statesboro. 28-3 Eagles. Along with former NFL quarterback Jay Walker, I'm Mark Neely. Chatting about the possibility, though it may be an outside one, in this, their transition year, second year, for the Southern Jamaica Bowl. We explain it further. There's a two-year mandatory transition period from FCS to FBS. They're in their second season, so they're eligible to win the conference championship. Those different parameters we just described a few minutes ago would have to happen for them to actually be invited to a bowl this year. You know what's tough for me to understand about that is they're, they're moving up. Yeah, I agree with you. Here, here, I know where you're going to go with that. Here's Ellison with the run inside the 30, 25, 20, cuts back. And pulled down at the 9-yard line. With Jimmy Odaibo, a 30-yard run. Current thing. Troy not accounting for the quarterback or the athleticism of the quarterback. Nothing there, but they just cannot tackle him. Mix up in the backfield, and Ellison just becomes an athlete. 13 rushes, 99 yards for Ellison. Already three rushing touchdowns. Really, I don't know, got him there. Bam speed. He's trying to add a second, and he does. His second rushing touchdown tonight, a nine yard run. What do we say? I mean, this is the Troy defense that on paper gives up 39 points a game. They're on the way. They give up over 240 yards rushing a game. They're on the way. The teams that give up those type numbers normally don't tackle one. That's just down by the goal line. That's just an arm tackle. You cannot arm tackle down by the goal line. But you must slow down the runner's momentum. Alex Hanks out of the hole to Ryan Nowicki and the snap from Big Ben. A good one, not through, and it's 35 to 3. Early moments here in the fourth quarter, and the Eagles add on. Georgia Southern on top of Troy, our ESPN College Football Primetime in the Sun Belt tonight. Georgia Southern trying to get a 6-0 in conference play, and Rams beat. Touchdown run has made it 35-3. Young Way Coon kicks off for the Eagles. And into the end zone for a touchback. Well, the Sun Belt, their ties to the various bowls. They have three tie-ins, the New Orleans Bowl, where they would play a Mountain West opponent. The new Camellia Bowl, which will be in Montgomery, Alabama, and the GoDaddy. On January 4th of next year, 2015, in Mobile's against the Bit American Conference team. So those are the three Sun Belt tie-ins. And, and that's why we talked about, you know, the bowl eligibility. And if this were not the second year, then obviously Georgia Southern would be looking at a tremendous opportunity to make it to a bowl game. The jet sweep, Chandler Worthy turns it upfield for a gain of two. Tackled by Antonio Glover, but you're about to make a point earlier, Jay. And, and I don't I can't give you a, a good answer. If a team is good enough in their first year at a higher level, why would they not be eligible for a bowl? When they're playing up. I mean, right. it's like if the big boys are supposed to be that good, well, if a team comes from FCS and moves up to FBS, why are we not allowing them to play? It's the highest level of collegiate football you could play. I understand if you're moving down and you have a team that's full of FBS players trying to win a, a championship against FCS, but I mean, when you're FCS, you only get 63 scholarships. The FBS programs get over 80. So I think what they're doing is more remarkable. And maybe it's something the NCAA needs to look at. I mean, they, I just don't understand the, the premise of it. Maybe there's an answer why and somebody could tweet us or tell us what it is. I can't come up with it. You should reward those teams. And more importantly, I, I think if the conference is okay with it. Right. Because I can understand you don't want teams trying to come in 
over two or three years in mid league. But if the conferences are willing to sacrifice a couple of their automatic bids to ball games. Well, he's in trouble. Big trouble. Before he's finally tackled at the 20 run by Antoine Williams. After Williams missed that one tackle, tackle before for a big loss. They've been on it, but look at the elusiveness. Good ball security, I will say that. Knows where he is, and now you got to find a place to get rid of the ball. Loses nine. So on fourth down, Troy punts. Ryan K. Can you imagine that the bowl matchup this team would be? I mean, what are the two losses they have on the year? To ACC schools, I believe. Lost to North Carolina State by one point to begin the season. And two weeks later, they lost to Georgia Tech 42 38. 33 yard punt there. Good field position for Georgia Southern. Obviously, the Seminoles bound to come back here, Jacob. What happens if Bobby Petrino's team does ambush it there tonight? Give it out. I think that costs the ACC a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know if another team will get there, but you know, and that's one thing I say about Florida State. You know, when we had our projections, what we thought the top four teams was, I always had Florida State number one. And the reason why, somebody has to prove to me they can beat them. I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> that team hasn't lost a football game in a long time, and Jameis Winston, for all the other annex, he's still undefeated on the football field. Up challenge the quarterback, he hands it off to Matt Breida. Rushes ahead to the 49. I can understand that mentality. If you're the champ until somebody beats you, you're technically still the champ. Because I mean, there are teams all over the country that play to the level of their competition. And sometimes Florida State's guilty of that, but the key is are you still in a position to win every game on your schedule? And they win the games on their schedule. Shaw getting another turn at quarterback for Georgia Southern. Get off to Devin Scott. I know Kevin Ellison is the starter. And he really runs this system well. I, I don't really see any drop off when Fabian Upshaw comes into the game. Do you, Jim? Not at all. It goes back to the point you mentioned earlier. If you're going to have a team that exposes the quarterback to get hit, then you better have another quarterback. And I think that's why this team is so solid. Two quarterbacks and David Jessen, keep in mind each of these kids are sophomores so they were recruited to run the option from underneath the center. But they're doing such a good job in picking up the offense and great coaching by the staff. Rita pushes straight ahead to the 40. Been there by Daniel Warren. Gain a five. Yeah. Yeah. One thing they Troy's done. They were not going to let Matt Breida beat him. And they forced everybody else to get involved, particularly the quarterback runs. It's been a tough night running the football for Breida. But the other parts have picked it up. And I say tough night, and he got 16 carries for 72 yards. Most running backs in the country, they'll live with that. Yes. Night. <laughs> but they've done a decent job of containing him, and the supporting cast has picked it up. L.A. Ramsby spun around but stayed on his feet to the 38. Tackled by Anthony Williams. We saw Larry Blakeney there a few moments ago, the head coach for Troy. And boy, I know the Troy fans out there tonight, Jay, are saying, okay. Frankly, I'm tired of hearing how great Georgia Southern is right now. But they are a really good football team. But that was Troy for five, six, seven years in the Sunbelt Conference. He's retiring at the end of this season. This was the marquee program in the Sun Belt for a lot of years. It and can't be again. I had an opportunity to speak with the athletic director of Troy about the search, John Hartwell. And their plan is they want to have a replacement in place by early December. And they've gotten some interesting phone calls from around the country. Hey, man, man. So oh, people God. know who Troy is, and I think the people that know hey, about man, Troy, they, they know about man, Troy because of the success that Blakeney has had. So right. I think the atmosphere down in Alabama, they owe a lot of thanks to him, and they're so thankful to him. And the Great field is named for him as one of two coaches to ever coach on the field that's named for him. And, but the replacement, where do you go forward from here? Very tough to fill in those shoes of a legend. And 
keep in mind, be careful what you wish for because you just may get it. And also, Sunbelt Conference has gotten a lot more competitive over the past year. Ransby. And on fourth and one, the Gordon's keeps the drive going. Well, no question, you know, this is Larry Blakey's baby. He's going to hand it off to someone at the end of the season. Probably not with the record or the talent level that he would like to hand it off, but you can't deny the success that he's had. There, right now in the NFL, there are 11 former Troy Trojans in the NFL. I don't think, if you ask the average person on the street, how many Troy players are right now active in the NFL? Yeah. 11, that's impressive. Marcus Ware? Yeah. Troy. Upshot. Lowered his shoulder there at the 25 yard line on Julius McCall and Rod Adams trying to bring it down. This season, I think the problem has been the, the lack of offense for Troy. Look at the, the athleticism on the quarterback getting to the outside. The pursuit angles haven't been there. It's just it's been tough. But the thing about it, you know they can coach defense because they've had dominating defenses before, but so often you hear you get caught up in coaches. You've got to have a great coach here. Any good coach in America will tell you nine times out of ten, the coach that has the best horses wins the race. Oh, yeah. And you've got to get some recruiting things together, so it's going to take a complete effort. But I will tell you, in this conference, very difficult just to out-scheme somebody. So they only have 80 total yards of offense right now in this game, and averaging 19 points per game coming in. Last year averaged 34 points a game. And it's Scott. The carry for the Eagles. You know, we saw Troy last year a couple times. Yep. And they had a game last season against Georgia State. They ran 102 plays in that game. Eight most last year among FBS teams. Uh, BYU had a game last year where they ran 115, and that was the most. 102 plays in a game. That offense, it, it, it was really well. And obviously, when you lose a quarterback like Corey Robinson, a wide receiver like Eric Thomas, tough guys to replace, but they just struggled badly offensively this year. They could, they could light you up. I mean, that's why I could really light you up throwing the football, and they were never out of a football game, and that's what's missing this year. I mean, now they get down early, and points are so hard to come by. And it's Scott. Boy, by the way, tonight, that's on 34 offensive plays. Georgia Southern just crossed 400 yards of total offense in this football game. What a difference the season makes for Troy. Georgia Southern averages 526 yards per game, so slightly below, but I think they're doing the courteous thing here, not really trying to pull us all in the wound. This game is well in hand, it's been so. It's so probably the start of the second half. Mr. Ron Upshaw with good blocking, cuts back, and is into the end zone. 19-yard touchdown run for Fabian Upshaw, his second rushing touchdown of the year. I just don't know what their game plan was for stopping the quarterback. We haven't seen it all night. Fabian Upshaw, if you're an option quarterback, you don't go into the end zone untouched. He doesn't even give a fake pitch. Where are the tacklers? Great blocking downfield. We know the wide receivers do a good job of blocking and solidifying the edge. But that just can't happen. 42-3, under six minutes to go. And the two quarterbacks tonight, Upshaw, now has a touchdown run at 96 rushing yards. Ellison has three rushing touchdowns at 99. Rushing yards. The quarterbacks running all over the field tonight for the Eagles. Move to center. Luke kicks off. Flakes. Andre Flakes with the run back. He's in a stiff arm to get him out to the 26 yard line where he's tackled by Darius Jones. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown. Why it was so easy. This is the person that has the responsibility of the quarterback. That is DeQuadrion Lewis, but what a fantastic job cutting him off at the angle by Darren Foreman over here. Watch him cut him off, cut him low. Down he goes, makes him stumble. He's responsible for the quarterback, and 
just like we talk about you have to play assignment football on defense well the offensive line they have an assignment as well and that was a great job by Moore. Darius Jones who made that tackle down for Georgia Southern by the way we, we have received an update on James Dean the Georgia Southern player who was carted off earlier uh, from what we are told from sports information here at Georgia Southern Dean did lose consciousness on the play on the hit to the head he has regained consciousness uh, that's the only report we have on his condition he has been transported to the East Georgia Medical Center though for treatment that's the latest we have on James Dean as they attend to Darius Jones a sophomore out of Woodruff South Carolina Five forty-seven left to go in the fourth quarter. That's the one, but I don't think everybody's really concerned about the ACC Coastal right now. No. The other side. <laughs> the other side that's got a Florida State Seminole team on there. Here's Jones walking off the field, and this is why you like that type of center technology. I mean, he he could be worried about a hip or an ankle or a shoulder, and they've got a page that's going to go off it anything regarding the head trauma and I think that's just really smart good hands it off to Kari Franklin and he's out the far side all the way to midfield 24 yard gain well Franklin with the run that is the longest play from scrimmage tonight for Troy First down at midfield. Wood hands it off and the run for Brandon Burks. Montreal Pruitt's been playing several series now. Quarterback for Troy. The starter, Brandon Silvers. Health-wise, he's fine. Yeah, this just seems to be a case J where Larry Blakeney and the staff think, hey, Silver's been a little bit banged up. Down big. Let's get him to the sideline and save him some hits here. I think that's a smart move. I mean, they only put three points up as an offense. The first half, and they're still stuck on three points. Maybe see if the backup can come in and give you a spark. Burks. Burks again. Gary here. Brandon Burks. We slip under the five minute mark. Georgia Southern with a win here tonight. He's going to win their sixth in a row. And improve to 6 0 in Sunbelt play and 7 and 2 overall. One of the Astros, how good is Georgia Southern and making it move up to the Sun Belt? I don't know if we'll ever know because they do not play Louisiana Lafayette this year. Don't take a trip down Broadway, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, not easy to go down there and the carry the yeah, folks down yeah, there in Raging Carry territory. Lafayette, yeah. tough place to win a football game. That's a fun place to go hang out with tailgaters, though. Oh, yeah. Look at the Sun Belt standings again. A win tonight. Eagles would be six and zero in conference play. And South Alabama is going to play Lafayette, so you, something could happen there. Then they've got Arkansas State, so some teams are going to beat up on each other. I think that column becomes on the right more important. How many teams will become bowl eligible for? I guess I say in order to keep Georgia Southern out of contention. I think that run right there by Jordan Chun is something that you wouldn't mind seeing a lot more of out of the Troy offense this year, Jay. He's quicker than you would think for somebody who weighs 234 pounds. I mean, he's running in between the tackles, and people don't want to tackle him. Who took the brunt of that tackle right there? Number 39, Raquan <laughs> Sam. And there was some face mask to face mask contact that looked like unintentional. Look at that. He just threw his body through that hole right there. Yeah, there was nothing there. Something about you know, what is it? E equals MC squared. That mass with that velocity and momentum. Wow, he can push the pile. I went to Howard. Dropping some Einstein <laughs> on us. Remind you, got to Howard. A earlier tonight from the Georgia Southern president. Dr. Brooks Keel on your knowledge of Statesboro and the school. Scarry Franklin. Nice tackle pulled down from behind by Patrick Flowers. <laughs> Yeah, 
electric flow that is with the tackle. Six one, two hundred fifteen pound linebacker getting some time tonight. First down for the Trojans here, trying to stick it in the end zone for the first time tonight. No scores, but a twenty-five yard field goal. Side 10, Steve Williams with the tackle. Montreal Pruitt. You see backup quarterback number 19, Caleb Williams. Welcome to the starting lineup. You're in the game. <laughs> Things don't happen that quickly when you're on the scout team, but good job by Pruitt. Leaving him in his trap. See some real bright white pants out there on defense right now for Georgia Southern. First and goal from the six. Franklin to about the three. Robert Bryce, Jamal Johnson with the stop. That's something you don't see in college football. Now I can say, oh, you see the bright right pants out there? Because, you know, they have a grass field here. So yep, that's you know, if you're playing, you know, the people that have been playing had the grass stains get sold. But you come in there with the bright white pants, you haven't been playing that much. So that's how you know the backups are in the game. Franklin again off left tackle and he's in touchdown second rushing touchdown of the year for the senior Kari Franklin at Troy finds the end zone for the first time tonight Franklin deserves it he had some good runs during that drive able to capitalize it good to see young man from Troy Alabama show him a little fight and get done Ball across the goal line once in this game. Ryan Kay's extra point gets him into double digits. It's 42 10, though a flag does come out. Minute 18 to play. There's a foul. And a rough kicker. Ten play drive for Troy. Went 74 yards. All 74 yards straight came off the ground. Those are their own medicine. Yeah. Personal foul. Rushing the kicker. Defense. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on a kickoff. Gary Franklin with the touchdown. Get Troy into the end zone for the first time tonight. That will be selected. Solomon. It's going to go out of bounds. So that defeated the purpose. They had the added 15 yards from the personal foul, so he's kicking off the midfield. Well, just beyond the end zone there, you see that uh, that's an astroturf, artificial turf field that I'm sure during the week. They kind of use it just to run a few things, hang out. But during games, parents can let kids go down there, run around. In fact, if Jay were not obligated to finish this game in the booth, he'd probably be down there right now throwing passes. But there used to be a berm there, a grass berm. They wanted an area where kids could continue to play during games, so they leveled it out. Put a little small artificial turf field there. And they've cool. been active. I mean, they've oh, been yeah. active all game. That, that's the least amount of activity all night. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crowded earlier. What a good idea. Bring your kids to the game, let them run around, get tired. Oh, yeah. That parents love it. You know, the, that just goes to how big the family atmosphere, no, the whole city of Statesboro. I mean, their practice field was, you talk about having blood, sweat, and tears in the practice field. I mean, the city, the people that lived in the city watered their practice field. They put drainage in there. They cleared it out. A number of people that walk around here that literally invested sweat equity into this program. Izzy you now in as the quarterback and Dennis Pritchard in at running back gets a carry and he's ahead to the 30 yard line with just over a minute to go. And I, I will tell you it was quite a pleasure when uh, Tracy Ham invited me to come over and talk to the young quarterbacks. And, you know, Tracy Ham is a hero of mine. You heard about everything he accomplished. Being one of the top passers and 
Canadian Football League and also one of the best winners of college football. He's a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. And they've got great mentor programs here that go along, and I think they're doing a great job. And the athletic director, Tom Kleinland, we had a long discussion. He said it was important for them to bring Tracy back. Yes, Tracy was a successful businessman in Atlanta, but for people in my generation, Tracy Ham is Georgia Southern football. It is Pritchard. All the way to the 38-yard line of Troy, a 31-yard run. Get the chance to shine here late. Yeah, this is getting bad. Look at the defeated faces of the Troy defense. And Georgia Southern doesn't have to run another play. They can just end it right here. And Eagles are going to go to 7-2 overall, 6-0 in yeah. conference with 421 rushing yards tonight. Numbers never lie. They average 402 yards, and they're going to finish with over 420. 42-10. We had seven combined touchdowns tonight, Jay, and all seven we're rushing touchdowns. Don't see that much in college football these days. You know, people say I don't appreciate the run being a former quarterback. Hey, this was impressive to watch. The running scheme of Willie Fritz and the Georgia Southern Eagles. They stay unbeaten in conference play. Now it's 6-0. Coming up next, college football weekend kickoff. It's been a fun time here at Statesboro. Glad you could share it with us. 42-10. Georgia Southern wins it over toward tonight. For Jay Walker and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for watching and good night.